And now we're going to turn to the second group of transformative science. And this year we're proud to be recognizing one of the most transformative approaches to neuroscience in recent years, optogenetics, the system that allows neuron circuits in the brain to be turned on and off using light. And this year, the 2018 Canada Gardner International Award recognizes three giants in the field, Dr. Peter Hegeman, Dr. Carl Deseroth, and Dr. Edward Boyden. The citation reads, for the discovery of light-gated ion channel mechanisms and for the discovery of optogenetics, a technology that has revolutionized neuroscience. So to tell us more about optogenetics, I'd like to welcome Dr. Sheena Jocelyn to the stage. Dr. Jocelyn is a member of the, medical, the Gardner Medical Review Panel, the committee uh, responsible for the first tier of adjudication in the selection of our awardees. She is a senior scientist in the Neuroscience and Mental Health Program at the Hospital for Sick Children, and herself a leader in the application of optogenetics to understanding learning and memory. Please welcome Dr. Jocelyn. Thank you, Janet. So my daughter is enjoying breakfast with us this morning. So my goal in the next three minutes is to break down light, light gated ion channels and optogenetics so that even she can understand the importance of these discoveries. So optogenetics is the use of genetics and gene transfer technology to allow cells to express light and light, and light sensitive proteins to control and observe the activity of specific cells in living tissue. Optogenetics, as Janet said, is truly a paradigm-shifting discovery. It cleanly splits neuroscience and many other fields of science into two branches. Post-optogenetics, in which researchers can use the power of light to make discoveries, and pre-optogenetics, before this was possible. Maybe we'll refer to that as the dark ages. So today we're celebrating the discoveries of Peter Hageman, Carl Dyseroth, and Ed Boydant. And I'm going to call these three uh, modern-day Voltaires who've ushered in a new age of enlightenment in neuroscience. So understanding how our brains function is a real fundamental goal of science. Not only is it important just for the sake of knowing how these very complex organs function, but it's also um, key for developing new treatments, therapies, and preventions for a myriad of brain disorders, everything from autism spectrum disorder to Alzheimer's disease, from substance abuse disorder to depression. So our brains are very complex. As you may know, our brains contain about 100 billion cells connected in about 100 trillion different ways. So to probe brain function, what scientists really need, it was a toolkit that would allow us to manipulate the activity of individual cells, either turn their activity up or turn their activity down, in a model organism such as a mouse, while the mouse is awake and behaving, so we can get a readout of what these manipulations are precisely doing. And this type of cell-specific dissection was simply not possible before optogenetics. So as you'll be hearing in one of the videos, optogenetics grew out of the fundamental discovery research exploring single-cell green algae. Now these algae phototacks, so they swim towards the light. Based on the incredibly fast time course of this response, Peter Hegeman first hypothesized that this behavior was made possible by a single protein with two components. One component to basically see the light and the other component to do something about it. And this would initiate a response, um, an electrical response that would initiate the, the moving response. And this turned out to be true, as channel rhodopsin, this one protein, was shown to have two components, the light-gated ion channel, the light-gated senses, and the ion channel does it. So um, based on this discovery, Carl Dyseroth, Ed Boyden, along with a number of, of colleagues, including Feng Zhang, who was a 2016 Canada Gardner International Award Laureate, used gene transfer technology to make cells deep within the brain of a mouse, a living mouse, express this algae protein. So when they shined light on these cells expressing channel rhodopsin, the light-gated ion channel, um, they could manipulate behavior. And the truly remarkable thing is that this experiment worked. So many things could have gone wrong, but they troubleshot it, so it worked. So since that time, thousands of papers have been published using optogenetics, and many important, previously unobtainable discoveries have been made using optogenetics. But it's just the beginning. But let's think back to how it all started. It started because some scientists were interested in understanding how algae swim, just showing that you never know from whence the next big discovery will come, and highlighting the intrinsic value of all types of basic research. 
So to summarize, because we're in Toronto, the six, I'm going to quote Aubrey Graham, Drake. And he said, it started from the bottom, literally, pond scum, and now we're here. Optogenetics is poised to help scientists crack consciousness and help develop new treatments for a variety of human disorders. Now the whole team's here, being honored by a Canada Gardner International Award. Thank you. Thanks, Sheena. So now you understand all about optogenetics. And really, it is an amazing uh, set of discoveries. That's ha We're talking here mostly about neuroscience, but there's no question that the general technology has spread way beyond neuroscience and in many different directions. So let's uh, hear from the three individual awardees. So let's hear from our first awardee, Dr. Peter Hegeman. And we'll now see a video of him explaining his research. I started my own research in 85. My interest was to solve the problem how green algae orient in light to find the optimal conditions for photosynthesis. And it was known that they use a sensory photoreceptor for this, and this photoreceptor was expected to be localized in the algal eye, which is the most widely distributed eye in nature. And this unique system uh, even more stimulated our interest and uh, it was finally solved in 2002 when we have demonstrated together with Georg Nagel that uh, the small molecule we isolated was really a light gated ion channel that we named channelodopsin at this time. After we demonstrated that it's also functional in human embryo kidney cells, um, several new scientists started to employ it for their studies in neurons and uh, it was a kind of explosion started in the year 2005 and now more than 1,000 groups in the world are working with this channel adoption in the neuroscience experiments. It's a very um, useful instrument for analyzing uh, neuronal networks and uh, also to evaluate um, studies on drugs and uh, also to uh, analyze animal behavior and to connect it to, to uh, brain function. And uh, we are doing this in a close collaboration with Carl Dyserod in, at Stanford and uh, a number of other researchers in Europe. And uh, this is very stimulating and a cooperation over the past 15 years, which is uh, very interesting and uh, delightful. The biggest inspiration certainly is nature itself because uh, it gives us all kinds of, of mysteria to work with and uh, second, certainly the students of my research group, uh, most of them very brilliant uh, individuals with uh, great patience to science and uh, uh, they come up with new ideas, with interesting findings and uh, unsolved problems, surprising data which cannot be interpreted on the basis of the current knowledge. And this is certainly inspiring. As a basic scientist from photobiology, it's certainly uh, a great honor to receive this prize with um, great friends of the neuroscience community, Carl Dyserold and Ed Boyden. And uh, I'm proud to share this prize with these two uh, friends, and uh, certainly I'm grateful to the foundation. It all begins with a little green algae. So, moving on, let's uh, uh, congratulate and and hear from. Uh, the next member of the, th the trio, Dr. Carl Dysroth, and we'll show his video now. Uh, we address two challenges, one basic science and one technological. Uh, first, there's a very special protein called channel rhodopsin found in algae uh, that, when triggered by light, uh, moves ions all by itself through a, a hole it creates in the membrane of a cell. And we sought to understand how this fascinating protein works as a molecule. 
Uh, the second related challenge was to develop a way to control cells with light using proteins like channel rhodopsins, but in animals. We were able to sort out how this amazing channel rhodopsin protein actually uh, works as a channel and as a molecule, how it determines what kind of ions are allowed to cross the membrane of the cell, its speed, its color uh, selectivity uh, for light, and so on. Uh, much of this work together with uh, my co-laureate, uh, Peter. And second, between about 2004 and 2009 in my lab, beginning with two grad students, Ed and Fung, who both also have the Gardner, uh, we developed optogenetics, control of specified cells in animals using light. Impact of my work has been primarily on the basic understanding of how these beautiful proteins from algae actually work. Uh, and uh, second, enabling the broader community of biologists to test how cells give rise to the properties of large, uh, functioning, complex uh, systems like the brain. My own lab's uh, application of this research has been in discovering how cells control basic survival drives, thirst, sleep, feeding, uh, other motivated behaviors. This is basic science, uh, but basic discoveries uh, eventually lead to promising new treatments, and we're already seeing this in the case of addiction. I'm most inspired, frankly, by my students over the years. Uh, the ones I've worked with are just amazing, rigorous, creative, and inspiring people. To students entering science, I would give the same advice I give my own children. Uh, follow and make your own path, and, and work on what seems beautiful. Uh, particularly to you.